woman and man A light unto the end of time This is all Islam أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وصلى الله على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم وبعد اللهم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وخل الأبدة من لساني يفقه قول I greet you with the universal grace of Islam, and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And I'm also bringing greetings from Zaytun Dawa Institute in Washington State, United States of America. And our institution specializes on invitation to Islam true scientific, logic, philosophic, and intuition. So we travel all over the United States to um, present Islam. And the way we present Islam in America is not the same that you do here. Here, we believe the messenger is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also believe the Quran came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no question asked. But a Westerner, He's not going to believe you. He want to see. He want to touch. He want to analyze. And then he believes. And so therefore, the scenario is absolutely different when it comes to Islamic propagation in the western part of the world. And so the topic in front of me, as was said to you, why is the West coming towards Islam? Why is it that in spite of all this Islamophobia, or phobic that you see all over the world yet islam is the fastest growing religion in america it is the fastest growing religion in europe As a matter of fact according to pew foundation and the helena rubinstein foundation these are the foundation that have specialized on research and they are saying that islam is still the fastest growing religion all over the world and so this is a credit to us, the Muslims. And why is the West coming towards Islam? The West is coming towards Islam because the West have no choice. The West is coming towards Islam because they think, they reason, they apply logic, they process information. They don't just believe, they analyze. That is why some of the Western people getting very close to Islam or the Quran, they begin to make analysis. So the West is coming to Islam because the West have tried so many ways of life. They have tried communism. It didn't work. As a matter of fact, there is no more communism. It's gone. The West have tried sociology. Sociology is not working. They are trying social democratic system that also is not working. So the West is forced by nature to look for the next alternative, and that alternative is Islam. The West is coming to Islam unbelievably. See, I live in America for 34 years. Next month, I'm going to be 34 years in America. And so, I work in the prison system. And I work mostly in universities where I present Islam. I go to jail. I go to the prisons. And I travel all over the 50 states to present Islam. And I'm surprised at the way they are receiving Islam. And when you ask them, why are you coming so close why are you reverting back to Islam? And they tell you, they've never seen the Quran, but for the first time they read the Quran, there is something about the Quran that is unlike any other book. And they believe this is a spiritual book. And so therefore, it's about time that they receive Islam. Sometimes we don't even have to do da'wah. By the time we begin our da'wah, they are coming to accept Islam. 
it is unbelievable the rate at which Islam is being accepted in the western part of the world is beyond my thinking is beyond our rationale this is the religion of Allah if this religion is for you and me no one will accept Islam it belongs to Allah so he made sure that his religion have reached each and every angle of the world few years ago I was in England we were having a conference and I met Yusuf Islam you know Yusuf Islam today he's called Cat Stevens this man used to play guitar almost naked on the stage almost naked Yusuf Islam but then he was called Cat Stevens but when he accepted Islam his life has turned around 360 degrees he is one of the prolific diet in Great Britain and he told me and said Muhammad Awal he said I am glad that I met, I met Islam before I met the Muslims that tells you a lot in other words we need to change our attitude if it is for you and I no one will receive Islam the internet it belongs to the West the social network it doesn't belong to the Muslims it's for the West they propagate whatever they want to propagate their intention was to use this media to belittle Islam but yet Allah in his wisdom have allowed the Muslims really to penetrate deep into this media outlet and Islam is still an ongoing trend it is a force to reckon with it's a force to reckon with an American tele-evangelist by the name Jimmy Swaggart now this Jimmy Swaggart is a tele-evangelist He's always on television. He had one of the biggest ministries in America. And he talks about Jesus Christ. He's a Christian, a very powerful ministry. Now, this Jimmy Swaggart, he wrote a book. And the book's name is The Dark Stain of American Society. The Dark Stain of American Society. In that book, Jimmy Swaggart said, America, oh America. If God did not punish you, then God must go back in time and apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. It is a very deep word that God have to, you know, uh, 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 punish America. Otherwise, God have to go back and apologize to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Meaning, the Americans have reached certain, you know, moral decadence. That America is engulfed with moral decadence materialistic America is sufficient they are good on material level but spiritually the West is bankrupt is absolute bankrupt and you the young persons eventually we will leave the mantle of responsibility is gonna be on your shoulder we are looking ahead that you should take Islam to the next level. Now before you take Islam to the next level, you have to be conversant with your religion. Understand your deen. The West is blind, looking for something to hold on to. They are so blind when it comes to religiosity. We have the truth. So, in Beijing conference, in 2012, Beijing conference women Beijing conference there was a conference from women all over the world and they you know uh, a, con a, a convention in you know in Beijing in China the reason why they set up this convention is that they think that the Muslims are not treating the women right they are looking to get women to be the same footing with men and they say what a man can do a woman can even do better fine in islam we understand we are the same in the sight of allah but allah have given each and every one its duty and you can compete the moment you begin to compete that's when you fall into the biggest problem that you can bring yourself out islam acknowledge that but the west is saying what a man can do a woman can do even better fine but Allah in his wisdom have divided the road we understand that road so the conference was set up to make sure that the Muslim 
should allow the women to do their prayers in the same hall like in the masjid we should be with the women that is the new agenda the Beijing conference women convention is pushing a very strong movement they were asking why is it that the women have to stay all the way in the back and the men should be in the front there is something wrong with Islam it is a religion of machoism in other words it's men who are ruling the religion if it's not true why should you allow the women to stay in the back and why should you also allow the women to be covered God have given them a beautiful persona they have to let it out they have to let everybody see what God have done the beauty of Allah they say is in the women and so to block the face of the woman or to make them dress in that long gap it is against spirit of equality that is what they say so when they say this we have to go on television we have to go on radio FM to present our case based upon the problem that they raise from their convention and number one they also raise why is it that in terms of division of inheritance the women get one percent and the men get two percent the women get two rooms the men get four rooms why is it that the women get 50 percent we said that is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were hammering on this issue they came on channel 7 in New York City one of the biggest channels in America to make their case so we went on radio to present our case the you know the psychological reason the physical reason the religious reason the spiritual reason why Allah have made that division to be so so number one we said if me and my sister our father is dead and he left you know the inheritance I get two and my sister even though she's she's the eldest she gets one and the whole auditorium they begin to start booing Ooh, why in other words why are we doing this to the women so I have to explain I'm giving an example that's what I told them I said let's suppose my sister was given one and I'm giving two whatever I'm giving she get half she's not gonna go and get married it is the man that will come to her and marry her give her the dowry and she pocket the dowry that's hers but if I'm gonna go and get married I'm gonna use my money to get married number one wisdom and number two I'm supposed to house my wife I pay for the housing everything and I'm gonna pay for her clothing and I'm gonna feed her also but my sister she didn't use her money her husband is marrying her giving her the dowry and all the goodies at the same time he build her house get her a car give her clothing feed her make her look like a queen and her children she don't take care of them it is the responsibility of the man in Islam to take care of them notwithstanding that my little nephews they come to me uncle I need this I need that uncle I don't have this I'm gonna have to take for my inheritance that was given to me to take care of my wife my children myself some of my family members because I'm the head of the family and on and on and on she she's not even responsible to take care of her children it is the man's responsibility you see the wisdom behind sharing one for the ladies and two for the men when I say all this thing they begin to clap they were clap I gave them over 25 scenarios and they kept clapping and clapping that is when the wisdom came to them and they were reasoning that whatever Allah does in Islam unless you don't know why there is every reason to any Islamic injunction and that reason once you understand is beautiful then I have to explain why is it that we stand shoulder to shoulder the men but the women are relegated to the backside covered with a screen why we should be together just like they do they say I said okay number one the messenger said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said 
the best role for the women it is the one all the way in the back that is the best role for the women because they're very far away from fitna the best role in the back and the worst the horrible role for women in prayers is the one in the front very close to the men the messenger said that is the worst role and for the man the best role is the one in the front in fact he said if you know the blessings entails being in the first row you will cast lot to see who will be in the first row and the worst row the Muslim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said is the one in the back because they're very close to the women this arrangement was done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last year the Vatican City the Vatican government the Catholic they spent over two billion US dollars settling cases of incest cases between the big sin of the bishop and the nuns the problem they having cases between the altar boys and the deacons using them raping them the altar boys thinking that Jesus did not marry so therefore the Pope is not supposed to marry or the deacon is not supposed to marry trying to do what Jesus did but Allah has given you a certain part of your life that you have to fulfill you are not Jesus and so therefore this is the problem that is engulfing Christendom and any other religion I'm not saying Islam is an angel an angelic religion but as a whole according to Pew Foundation and the Helena Rubinstein Foundation they said the case of incest and rape in Islamic religion compared to any other religion is negligible negligible means we are not angels all of us we have some bad apples amongst us but you can't even come close to what the missionaries are doing to their own you know different uh, group of uh, you know or sexes and so this is one of the reasons why Allah set it up so and can you imagine during our salat let's say we're doing zuhur salat and I'm standing in the road just like this and sister Maryam is on my right side and sister Habiba is on my left and sister you know Zainab is in front of me I want you to picture that kind of scenario and then the Imam begin to pray Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Raheem Malik Yawmi You see what I'm saying? Allah He knows and then we go down in Ruku Allahu Akbar you're gonna check it out man you check it out look it's the truth Allah he knows he knows all these things and now during Salah I am thinking you see the body of a woman it's not like the masculine it's so soft so very soft so now the messenger said get close when you do Salah shoulder to shoulder Allah Akbar Sister Mariam is here, I'm going to edge up. I'm going to feel soft. So now I'm thinking, who is the Akbar? Who is the Akbar? Is it Allah or Sister Mariam? You're going to be thinking. It's natural state of mind. So Allah, He knows the arrangement. He prepared it for the Muslims. He prepared this for the Muslims. And that is why Islam is striving. In 2015, in Sydney, Australia, the Australians, according to their demographic layout, 2015, each and every 15 second to 20 second, some sister, some girl, somewhere is being raped. The rape situation in Australia is beyond epidemic proportion. So the clergy, they came to they couldn't solve the problem the social scientists the human psychologists they couldn't solve the problem of rape in sydney australia it is so rampant every corner night afternoon day i don't know what's going on but that is what is happening so the clergy came to you know the sanctuary of religions they came to the christians they want to know what do you have in place to curtail this onslaught to the women so they gave them what they think should be done 
it didn't work. They went to the Jewish you know, community and they asked them how and what should we do according to Judaism to protect the women from the onslaught of rape, which you also know that is going on all over the place. They came to the Muslim finally because Islam to them is the last resort. So finally, they came to the Muslims and they asked them, they asked the Imam, what can we do to stop this onslaught of rape in our community? And the Imam said, if we tell you the answer, would you take it and work with it? They say, yes, of course, we will take it. Then the Imam said to them, what do you think if you have a red meat, red meat, flesh, red meat, you cut a red meat and you put that red meat at the side of the street, what will happen to it? Number one, flies will buzz around it. And number two, lizards, dogs, hyena, they will buzz around it. They say, yes, it's okay, that is what you did to your children. That's what you did to, the, to your female you know, uh, 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 daughters and, uh, and wives. Because you went to Victoria's Secret and you buy them skimpy, wicky, nacky, ticky kind of clothes to put it on. And once they go outside, the flies, the cats, you are enticing them. Don't you see in Islam, the women are covered. So, after they made this situation, this announcement, guess what happened? The following day, Shaykh, they came and said, the Muslim communities are making fun of the Western civilization. Which, which fun? When they make those statements, Hollywood, Shaykh, just two years ago, I'm sorry, yeah, three years ago, Hollywood took it upon themselves. They came to Harlem, New York City, the most dangerous street in the world. I don't know how they read it up to be the most dangerous street. It is true. It is one of the most dangerous streets in the world. In Harlem, 125th Street and Malcolm X Boulevard. The most dangerous corner in the world. So Hollywood, they came to New York. They want to do analysis and see why is it that the women of Islam, are they being forced to put on the hijab or they just put it by the will of Allah according to the Quranic dictates. They want to know. They're not going to ask the Muslim women, no. They want to check. This is science. They want to find out. So when they came to Harlem, check, they brought a woman by the name Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell is one of the most beautiful women in the world. That's what they say. I think the most beautiful women are in this house tonight. Are you going to stand somewhere and say the most beautiful woman in the world? But what, that's how they call her, Naomi Campbell. She's black, very dark. She's a supermodel. And then another sister by the name Chrissy Brinkley. Chrissy Brinkley is also a white woman. She's the supermodel. Guess what? If you have a new dress and you want these two supermodels to showcase it on you on the cartway, you have to pay Naomi Campbell one leg costs 10,000 US dollars and the other leg costs 10,000. So both legs cost $20,000 for them to wear a cloth from here to the gate. Just maybe 20 seconds. You pay $20,000. So they call these women and they pay them this amount. And they ask them to walk from 125th Street to 126th Street to see what will happen to them in the hijab. They brought some women from Kuwait embassy to dress these two women who are not Muslims. Dress them in a hijab way. Beautiful look. Already they're beautiful. Imagine a beautiful woman in a beautiful hijab. Subhanallah. She'll be like an angel walking the earth. So these two women, Hollywood superstars, model, they put on the clothes and they begin to walk. They begin to walk. And I'm going to demonstrate the walk. Those of you who don't know how to cut walk. So they put on the clothes and they keep walking and stepping, you know, bopping and everything. And they're coming down and, <laughs> and, and they were just stepping up. And the, and the scientists were hiding in a van. They were taking notice of the community. What are they saying? Wallahi, 
once these women get very close to some hooligans you know those guys with the pants like this holding liquor and 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 and, and weed looking all dangerous with a gun over here they were on the sidewalk and what happened was that the, the ladies were asked to pass in between them. Wallahi. Once they begin to walk in between them, once they get to these ladies, I mean to these guys, dangerous guys, you know what they did? Salam alaikum, Allahu Akbar. Yo, man, pass by, Allahu Akbar. Salam alaikum. Because of the hijab that they put on. Wallahi, they let them pass by. So the scientists were watching and they're taking notes. Then they asked them again, this time, to take off the hijab, take off the clothes, and put on the skimpy, wicked, revealing clothes. And they did. You can't even go like this. It's so tight. Imagine tight dress in the summertime in New York City, man. So these sisters, the sisters begin to walk again. Once they begin to walk, they ask them to go to the same direction they were, you know, a few minutes ago. So when the sisters begin to walk, the guys didn't know that it was them that passed there a few minutes ago. So when they get there, guess what happened? Ooh, wee, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Can I have your number, man? I want your digging. Yo, sister, man, you got a nice leg. Damn, man, what's going on? Can I, like, talk to you, sister? What's going on? You know, that, that's, that's what's happening. Because they don't know it's them. So the scientists, they said, mm. they wrote everything down. The following day, the following day, it came on New York Post. The mystery and spiritual reasons behind the wearing of the hijab of the Muslim. They gave information that is so convincing when they did that the following day, the owner of the newspaper sacked them. Why? Because why are they propagating Islam? Why are they selling Islam? Our intention is to destroy Islam. Now you're telling Islam how good hijab is. Look, this is the West. This is what is happening. And today, Wallahi, I'm telling you, as a brother, as an uncle, as a father also, to you, that to become a Muslim in the Western world today is a new style. If you are not a Muslim, it's like you're not part of the trend. To be a Muslim is a new fashion. They see you with a clothes on like this, Salam Alaikum brother, you Muslim, Allahu Akbar, Salam Alaikum, Allahu Akbar, you know? It's a new thing. To be a Muslim in America is like a hype. They see a kufi on, they know you're a Muslim. So they come to you, salam alaikum, salam alaikum. It's a new thing. Islam is looking to get to Islam. But our behavior, our behavior is the biggest problem. We don't package Islam. We don't package Islam. You see this, this here, if you want to sell this, you want to sell this, you package it well. Give it a good packaging. People will buy just because of the package to see what is inside. Don't you see Christendom? See how they package their religion. Even at the back of their book, beautiful packaging. Jesus love you with the flowers embellished with some goldish kind of beautiful, nice. So people buy, it attracts. When you go to the store to buy something, you know, the salesman, he walks to you with a nice dress, smelling good, with a beautiful smile, talking to you, maybe patting you, asking you, can I help you? That's a good package. That's how you sell. But we don't have the good packaging. Our name is soiled. Even though they created all this thing, fine. But if they created all this thing, why do we fall into it? I went to some place, I was giving a lecture. And the young guy, like 15, 16 years old, he came in the lecture hall. He was wearing, you know, a pen. But the pen is like all the way to his butt. So this 
working that place? That man, what's wrong with you, man? What do you work like that for? You come to my I said, man, get out of my, get out of my home. I don't want to see your dating underwear. Who wants to see your dating underwear? And by the way, do you know where that came from? That walking like a crap. It came from jail. So I have six prisons in America that I take care of. I'm a chaplain in six US prisons. Travel all over and I'm present. What happened is that in America, some people get thousand years in jail. Some get 2,421 days, 15 seconds in jail. Some get 102 seconds in jail. That's how they kind of keep them back there. So those who are the inmates who are slated to die in jail, some are being down here without any possibility of parole. Some even have three counts of life sentence in jail. Many is, is, he, he killed somebody in New York City, they're looking for him. And he killed somebody in Washington, they're looking for him. He killed somebody in Tennessee, they're looking for him. So if he died in New York, he's going to stay. Once he's dead, they will take the bed, the skeleton. They will put, you know, like, um, handcuff and go and bury him in Texas again. After seven years, they will bring the dead bones to the next city to set the game. This is how America behave. So these guys, if they got life imprisonment, when they, when they see the young guy that comes in with maybe six months in jail, one year, they say, give you a belt, and they take your blood away from you. So they don't have no belt, the young guy, and they really hold their hands walking like this. So when they came outside jail, to them, it becomes a new start to show that they lead to jail, and they need to walk like crap. That is where it came from. So I was wondering, why is it that you want to copy something that came from jail, from hooligans? Watch out. America is looking for the next alternative. Islam is the next alternative. When I went to America in 1984, 1984, when I was in America, if you were a gay, they burn you alive. They rely on you. They burn you. You can't come out and say, I'm a gay man. You get burned. You die. Would it mean it? But today, the US president are pushing the agenda of being gay. They are pushing that agenda. They travel Obama, I don't know why he did that, but he travel all over the world, telling everybody to allow for the gay people to enjoy their rights. So how the law? Before no, but now yes. And the new trend in America today is that there is something called white swapping. Wife swap. I gave you my wife, you gave me your wife, and he gave me his wife for the weekend only. Every weekend. It's a new thing. It's coming here. It's not a matter of nothing. Because back in the day, you can't say you are gay when they are gay free. They get their right in the United Nations. So this thing now is coming here. They have started in Hollywood. For the rich people are the ones that have tried it. Those whom you call superstar. Lady Gaga, you call them superstar? Kanye West, you call them superstar? This guy who don't do salat, he doesn't pray, he drink, he gamble, he shoots drugs in his body. Just because he's on the screen and he's rapping and you call him a superstar and you want to copy him? Do you really want to copy Lady Gaga? You want to copy Rihanna? Rihanna is a drug addict. You want to copy Whitney Houston? She drove herself to hell. And you want to copy her? Do you want to be like the Hollywood looking with all this bling bling talking about what's up? Is that what you want to do? Is that what you want to do? Look, I went to America to look for money. I'm telling you straight up, I'm part of you. I went to America to look for money, to get cash, to come back home and get the most beautiful woman and marry, drive fancy car, look good and chill. Allah is visible, look at me. I'll be told.
companies like this for more than 25 years in America. That's what I do. My job is to travel all over the place and deliver natural Islam. Allah has changed you. Look at my area. Do you see the mountain? Can you see a hole? No. Can you see a hole here? Yes, yes. Right. My earring used to be this big. Oh. Well, I want you to do it for me. I said, what is it? She said, I 
I want you to promise that you will do this. I can't I can't promise that moment. It might be against my religion. So I've got to know what is it that you want. She said, um, I want you to come to me to the church. I said, you want me to come to the church? What? She said, well, I want you to come and see. I want you to come, come. I'm trying to help you. I said, thank you for the help, but inshallah, I will go. She said, you will go? I said, yeah. She said, oh my God. Even the Holy Ghost told me this. <laughs> She said, 
create Judaism. We have to send Judaism, Hinduism, Taoism, Shintoism, Confucianism, Baha'ism, all this ism. We have a lot of religions in America, all sanctioned by the government to take care of their business. But nobody cares about any one of them except Islam. I work in the prison system. We have to go to prison five times in a week. They cut it down to three times. And they cut it down again to two times. Everybody goes to me five times. We want to go to work. Why? They say, every time we go to prison, we must talk. What is that talk? The rate that people are converting to Islam is too much. So they call it, we must in trouble. And this white guy, let's take to our white guy, he accepted Islam. And then he said, excuse me, Shaykh, I said, what? He said, well, uh, I want to have a name. I said, okay, what name do you want? He said, I want to be called Abdul Jihad. Oh. I said, Abdul what? He said, yeah, man, I want to be called Abdul Jihad because I just, I'm just ready to go. I said, no, man, the Jihad, the concept of Jihad is to do it for yourself. You have to conquer your innate animal instinct, the nature in you, that asks you to do certain things that are not consistent with Islam. Conquer that one first. Once you do that, then your children, then your family, then your environment, eventually it will reflect the people. That is the biggest challenge you do. But now we are in a country that is not Islamic country. We can't rise up and do jihad. So in our mosque, we said, about eight years ago, there is a black man, a very handsome young man. His name is Bilal, but his Christian name used to be Peter. He was called Peter, but he became a Muslim, so to speak, and we, he was named Bilal. We all know him. He always in the masjid. He is the one that opened the masjid, set up the camera, set up everything. He worked with the Allah, he is the one that organized and fixed everything. Everything. He's Sometimes we don't have money to give us money to buy gas, you know, gasoline, to travel to different places to deliver messages. We all love him so much. So two years ago, I went to Africa for education. When I went back to the Muslim, during Muslim time, I went to the Muslim. I went to the Muslim, ah, I said, I went back to the So I sat down with the public. And I looked around, and I was asking, I said, where's Peter? And everybody knew that. I said, where is Peter? They said, tell him, tell him. I said, what? Did he die? They said, no. I said, what? what? Where is Peter? They said, he's not a Muslim. Peter huh? was not a Muslim. He stayed with us for more than five years. Not a Muslim. So who, who is Peter? He was sent by the FBI and Secret Service to infiltrate our Muslim. A very good dream is the soul. The soul of the human is the Oh, So what happened was that later they began to play some of our hope, some of our dreams, some of our lectures. Then I believe because anytime we do a lecture, he is the first to ask questions. Say, Shane, why is it that we don't have a flash of air and then we live in the world? There's just so many to far. You know, they marry women, marry women, men marry men, and all this kind of stuff. It's against Islam, it's against the Quran. And Allah has said, anyone who doesn't apply Allah's rule, that person will go to hell. I think about that shape, design a system of Sharia. Yes, what do you think about that shape? Give us the answer. He asked me this question, and for some reason, Allah protected me. I'm almost in the computer, don't worry about the Sharia thing. Yes, go deep in Islamic music. Learn more about yourself, about Islam. Apply Sharia in your mouth, in my friend. It's in the hands of Allah. But don't worry about that. So I begin to pray that. Wow. So most of the imams in the United States have been taken out. They took their citizenship, they keep them outside the United States. Because of the way some of them like propagate Islam. With force. Condemn the United States and most of the people, what you are doing, you shall not come. I'm not going to do this. We have to apply Sharia. I don't do that kind of stuff. That's not good. That's not the best way. I said, put me 
להסביר רבקה ולהבין מה כל המורות זה. זה מה שאנחנו עושים, וזה 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 מה שאנחנו All they say it now, we're going to destroy them and I say, no, Islam is in the heart. It is the religion of Islam. And the fact that we are called Muslims is one of the greatest miracles which I've always mentioned. We are called Muslims. The fact that we are called Muslims is a greater miracle. All other religions, Hinduism, by the name of Hindu, Taoism, let's say Tao, Confucianism, by Confucian. Hinduism, by the river Hindu. Buddhism, Gautama Buddha. Judaism, the race, Jew. Christianity, Christ, Jesus. You, why is it that we are not called Mohammedanism? That is the Buddha. It is a Buddha that Allah, they started calling them as Mohammedans. When I was growing up, they were calling them as Mohammedans. But Allah didn't see it. You don't hear about Muhammad. We are Muslims. Surrender our will entirely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my young students, my young daughters and, 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 and sons and all of you here, you have a big work to do. And the big work is to show the Islam and take it to the next level. Whatever we are doing, it is your responsibility take it to the next level. You have to educate yourself before you do anything. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. With your master's degree, you can't even get a job. Imagine if you don't have education. What's going to happen? Educate yourself. The first message from Muhammad was what? Ignorance. Read. So you should be reading. You should be researching. You should be analyzed. Islam is a religion for intellectual, not just anybody. Yes, for everybody. But you have to use your own giving, both reasons and mental powers to process the information in Islam. You can be the leader if you can understand what Islam is all about. Allah said, you are the best of people chosen to guide mankind. So how can you guide mankind if you don't have the knowledge? Knowledge is power. If you educate yourself, you educate one person. You educate the whole, the woman, you educate the whole nation. So I am an advocate for women education. I give series of lectures intensifying that our women will need to be educated. Once they get the education, they take care of the young. Once they get education, they take care of the house. And the next generation will be nurtured in Islam. The messenger said, we should learn from the day we were born so the day we will be great. He didn't say the men should learn. The women also, in fact, they are the ones that are supposed to be giving the maximum level of education to the women. So it's about time that we rise up to the challenge of educating the women and the men. Also, all of you together. Otherwise, it's going to be a big problem. Do you see how they use this? As a punching bag, they use it as a dogma. They say whatever they want to say about Islam, just because we don't have education. Because when Allah said Ikra, we say that we're not going to read. Allah said read, we say no, we're not going to read. And if you're not going to read, you're going to end up in a situation that you can't get yourself out. That's exactly what the Muslims find themselves. Do you also know that there was a time from 9, 10, 11, 12, 10, 14, 15, up to 16th century, the Muslims were ruling the world. It is in the annals of history, I'm not saying it, it is in the textbooks. The Muslims were ruling the world. The Arabic language used to be the world international legal framework. At that time, we call that time the golden age of Islam. The golden age. At that time, the Europeans, they were living in cages. They don't take no shower, they don't have no perfume, they stay. When the Muslims were busy in Baghdad, and they leave the Christian prayers of fasting and go to Hajj, they left the Lord, but they took, they bring all the books. So all the sciences that you think is made
name or was brought forth by the Western mind is actually from Jerusalem. So today, inshallah, I think I'm going to come back in the evening, right? And do some program. And the topic of my talk is going to be the scientific miracle of Quran. Then I'm going to present to you why you should hold on to your books. In fact, if you hear the lecture, you will develop like it or you will develop that sentimental pain to educate yourself as a Muslim and you should be proud as a Muslim. And so this is my task for you. I'm going to come back maybe next year and I'm going to come and find out the percentage of those in this great institution that are graduated who fly to college. Already I was told that this is one of the best institutions in Abuja. In fact, you guys are going to be contending the world of Nigeria, even to the world level, it can be done. The sky is the limit. Definitely, I'm going to stop here. My time is up, and I don't know if you might want to ask me a few questions.